My name is Anthony Walthausen and I'm the director and founder of the Gay and Lesbian Network, which is based in Peter Marysburg, South Africa. Okay, hi. Uh, I am Spelele. I work as an outreach coordinator uh, at Gay and Lesbian Network and I am also a chairperson of uh, LGBTIQA uh, sector in Umkungundu district here in Peter Marysburg, South Africa. Well, just to briefly explain, uh, the Gay Lesbian Network started out uh, in 2003 and we started out to provide safe spaces for LGBTIQ people in, in our uh, municipality in Peter Marysburg at the beginning and we we progressed since then to provide more on uh, support in psychosocial support and programmatic work in respect of uh, creating uh, an enabling environment and safe spaces. Um, we've organized uh, a lot of uh, events that we've also, uh, for example, prides as well as um, taken into consideration uh, the issues that LGBT are facing um, around issues of hate crime, we do a lot of uh, um, outreach work in communities and we engage with different stakeholders like the police, um, your clinic staff, your government departments, um, traditional leaders as well as your religious leaders to sensitize them on LGBTI issues. So in order to create a space where pe LGBTI people can be accepted in their, in their communities and, and in society at large, um, we do a lot of um, advocacy work around the issues and, and, and policies as well as um, engaging in different uh, accountability structures where we serve in order to give LGBTI people voices uh, to the issues. Um, so we've been in operation for 16 years now and um, and we've been growing from strength to strength as well as we just recently we've done we done a, a new strategy where our focus now is just to work in rural areas in South Africa and well in KZN and Papua Zulu Natal. Okay, um, as a, as an outreach coordinator, um, the our findings are especially in rural areas, LGBTIs are disowned by their parents. If they're not disowned, they are being abused physically, emotionally, and most of the times they are being sexually abused by their family members and also, uh, and also external people. And uh, also, they are also disowned in the, in the village communities. And they're also not given opportunities uh, like especially like uh, educational opportunities, uh, because we are we are seen or, or or rather they regard us as LGBTIQA plus individuals as people who have no future, who has no common sense, and we are also also being cursed by the ancestors. We are cursed by God Himself. We are cursed by the universe. So there are so many issues where also our cases are not being attended. We, we, we lodge cases, uh, 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 but our cases are not being attended to. They are being thrown out of court. And even if we go to health, uh, health facilities, they, they secondarily victimize uh, uh, us. Um, and also even in police in police station they secondarily victimize us so there are so many issues and also the employment part if you are openly gay you it's, it's very difficult for you to find employment and also and also if you are a transgender person that is a taboo you are considered as you are frauding them. They will say what's in or in your ID is not it's not aligned with your physical appearances. So we also suffer from hate crimes, hate crimes also and um, corrective rape. Yes, in, in, in big in big cities, 
so much is going on. Yes, but what is mostly happening in big cities, it's the hate crime and the corrective rape. And because so many of LGBTIs are in big cities because they ran away from their home state, like their rural areas. So in rural areas, they are in contact with one of each of them. So the, 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 the abuse, oh, it, it, it's directed to you from the time you're growing up. Then you run away. Then in cities you are being you, you are being targeted by those people, but not that necessarily every day you will find you being abused by the same person. But most of the times you being uh, also suffer from hate crime and rape uh, and, and rape cases. But in in the rural areas, rural areas are very deep because everything happens there, and you have nowhere to run to. So it's only you and the abusers. It's either you stay with the abusers or you run away. Okay. But the cities, the problem is you you will find no place uh, to stay, and also the employment uh, employment pro is is the is the highest problem problem uh, at this uh, at this current uh, at this current manner. Actually, uh, actually, correcting that because South Africa, as you mentioned, has uh, progressive laws, and and uh, the, what we have on paper is is, is progressive uh, worldwide, but the implementation of those uh, the laws and policies are, are not actually implemented. This is the challenge we have: is that you have uh, policies, for example, in 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 our parliament, there's the hate crime bill that is actually uh, in discussion at the moment because it's, we're also dealing with the, the issues of hate crime perpetrated against LGBTI people. So we have this hate crime bill, but it's 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 taking forever to be passed in parliament. But once it's implemented, once it's passed in parliament, we are unable to be implemented because. For example, this lack of resources that government does not uh, allocate to these these new uh, acts and in, in, in from Parliament, the policies are not properly implemented. The, there's no training for your government departments like your police, uh, your your health departments, uh, home affairs. So these are very progressive uh, laws and policies that we do have, but the challenges is really about imp the implementation. Uh, of these laws by the actual government itself. Well, I think it, it, it relies on all LGBTI organisations to uh, uh, to advocate and to make uh, to hold the, the government accountable and and, and to speak out uh, about the, the these policies that are not being implemented. Because, um, for example, we do, we have what's called Chapter Nine institutions in South Africa, which, for example. You have the South African Human Rights uh, Commission, you have the Gender uh, Commission, uh, you have the Public Protector that you can report, uh, and you also have, for example, the the the, the investigative uh, your policing as well too, where you can actually report the police to a body uh, within the police. Um, so you have these all these bodies that you can actually report to. The non-implementation of or, or discriminatory uh, acts towards LGBTI people to these bodies, and hopefully that will actually bring about the recourse that we see, and hopefully to bring about the changes that we that needed to be implemented uh, by the different uh, government departments. Okay. Well, I think the the corrective rate is, is, is mostly targeted to your. Um, Mostly in, in the, the the incidents that we've uh, that has been uh, recorded in South Africa lately is your black lesbians, um, especially your um, your uh, your butch lesbians that have been targeted uh, by um, perpetrators that in order they they feel that they can in order for you to to be uh, uh, to love another to love a man instead of a woman to woman they actually actually say that uh, in order for they, they say that to rape you is in order to, to, to put you to correct you so that you actually then be able to have a relationship with a man if you're a lesbian so we actually have have it we've actually had have a high incidence rates of hate crime perpetrated against black lesbians especially your masculine uh, uh, looking uh, uh, female lesbians 
that are targeted by perpetrators and that are raped. And in some cases, they actually are brutally murdered as well too. And also we have the, the outcry of transgender women who are also the, the, the easy target of this, of this chronic act or rather illness to people that we are, as trans women, we are being raped because they say, you want to be a woman, let us show you what is to be a woman. So most of the times they will gang rape a transgender person after the gang rape, then they will beat you harshly. If you are lucky enough, they will not kill you. But sometimes if you know them, you can spot them, then they will kill you uh, or in the scene to eliminate the evidence. So the, the, the act of raping, even what my cousin, uh, um, Anthony just said, that lesbians are being raped because they say they are giving you the opportunity to feel what you're missing. Uh, when you are busy sleeping with another woman as you are also a woman so they're giving you the, what you should be given that they because they believe that you have ran you, you've run you have ran away from the woman responsibility the woman in our black society the woman responsibility is to se sexually satisfy a male so you have ran away from so that us give it to you so you can have a feel and they say it is just an opportunity so you can convert or repent to your, your prescribed or expected gender roles. Um, yes, we do. We actually have, we provide uh, psychosocial support which is uh, provide counselling but at the same time um, we have also provide legal support as well too because what we do we also have a referral system as well too and we work with other NGOs and we've also developed relationships with government departments this well when I mentioned earlier on that we do a lot of uh, gender and sexuality training with different government departments to sensitize them so we've actually created a, um, we've developed that relationships with different government departments like the police and, and your um, health uh, departments uh, your clinics so what we were able to do is we were able to uh, provide the, the person with, with, uh, with guidance and support through uh, rape uh, uh, cases uh, and uh, with their traumatized we provide them psychosocial support as well and then we also take them through um, the, when they go through the, the court system as well to, to assist them with, um, and, and support them at that level as well. Um, and to ensure that there is a conviction of the perpetrator as well. Um, P stakeholders and general community, uh, they do attend and sometimes they will even request the gender and sexuality workshop because uh, uh, it also makes them comprehend or do an introspection who they really are. Some of people uh, are living a double life. Some people are, are, are living the heteronormativity life because it's what is expected at their homes. And they can't come out and say, I am I'm part of LGBTI. Uh, because they, and also the gender and sexuality, it also gives them the opportunity to understand the other uh, gender varieties that we have and also sexual varieties that, that we have. And also it also eliminates uh, the misconceptions that we, we have because people, they, they had a misconception that if you are born with two genitalia, it means you are gay. They didn't understand that the part of you are an intersex and there is a gay man. And so they, 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 our gender and sexuality, it, it's broad in a way because we even explain in detail that there's a difference between a gay man and, and a transgender person. 
So and also our sexual and also expand on our on sexual uh, if, uh, sexual varieties or different sexual orientations. But it's well received. But even though some, especially in some health uh, health institutions, they refuse us the access because they will require a national letter that confirm that we that gives us authority to come and sensitize them in in their clinics or hospitals uh, so that is the our main issue is to get that letter uh, because when you go and ask for that letter everyone say they give you they they, they all link you to refer you to other people so that is our main problem that we can't do more what as much as you want to. But I think uh, with, with regard to uh, the, your immigrants, uh, national foreigners that actually come into South Africa, they uh, also are hidden as well too because they don't come in as LGBTI, they actually uh, escape from the, the situation from the, the, their country um, because yeah. they, don't, they don't present themselves as gay, lesbian, bisexual or transgender persons because they're gay in, when they're traveling, they they they've got to be uh, assimilated to what society is about, and and to be to act sort of heterosexual. So uh, the challenge there, also when arriving into South Africa, they again do not want to uh, um, uh, let people know of what their sexual orientation is. So we do have a challenge with undocumented uh, foreign nationals that are coming into South Africa and. Um, so, but you do find that some of them that are do seeking a, asylum because of their sexual orientation, there's a, a small major, a small minority that actually uh, apply for that um, to to leave their, their, their country for to, to come to South Africa. So the the challenge there is that they aren't actually revealing their sexual orientation when coming to South Africa. Or um, so we haven't had cases where you had. Uh, a very small a number of cases that have come through that uh, people are actually identify as uh, LGBTI and are a able to uh, seek asylum because of their sexual orientation. So that is a major challenge for them. Um, and um, so we there's, there are a number of uh, organizations that deal with immigration and, and, and uh, asylum seekers. And if we do get cases like that, we actually refer them to them in refugee organizations as well. I think in in, in rural areas, when you are, in order to get their attention, you need to communicate in their language. That is the first step. You need to communicate. Also, you must also check, understand the village dialect because we might speak the English, but the way the men are speaking the English is not the same. So you need to understand the, the village uh, uh, communication dialect. And two, you need to communicate with the gatekeepers first. You need to synthesize first the gatekeepers. After the, uh, the gatekeepers, then you ask them to organize a workshop for you as an organization. So that makes it easier if you have started on top because they will be now understanding. They will tell you what 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 in our own finding is that they understand that there is a homosexuality sex activity that happens in rural areas. Because when we go when we do the the cattle he heading and also goat heading when you go to the forest they will tell you during uh, the adolescent stage they will also pick one one feminine male then they will use that feminine male to teach each other how how how, how to make love to a female but using that uh, using homosexual act and if they see you when in later stage you you are um, an openly gay person, they will, they say they they thought they assumed that you what they were doing to you in those uh, in those bushes you liked it. So they will tell they say yes the homosexual uh, activity has been 
there for for a period of time for as long they can remember because the wives the the, the housewives uh, they would stay behind while the men will go to big cities to work in mines so they will have relationships with another wives uh, with, with another wives in order to prevent being pregnant so they know those acts that they have been happening so even in churches they know that in some churches the act of homosexual has been happening under the carpet but it, 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 it was not something that people should come out and 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 encourage and be fabulous about their sexuality they say if doing doing it it's not a problem but they they said when you embracing the issue is when you embracing your 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 sexuality that becomes an issue because they say you are promoting you are promoting um homosexual activities but if you are straight acting and you do it uh, after nine or at night it's fine but if you're doing it when you are coming out and, and, and you being yourself that the issue start there they don't want you to embrace and be free about your homosexual activities unlike in cities you you, you can't be free and be flamboyant about who you are um you know there's there's quite a lot of uh part events throughout south africa uh, Normally, I mean, uh, you will have them in your bigger cities like Johannesburg, uh, Durban, and, and Cape Town. But now you're finding that a large amount of these uh, parts are also taking place in your um, township areas as well, too, in South Africa, mostly which, which are predominantly uh, your African areas as well. And um, so, for example, in Peter Marisburg, where we are, we've actually had a number of uh, numerous of prior events. and. Um, we've also recently uh, uh, established a, a what's called KwaZulu-Natal Pride as well, too, which is bringing a, a, together a, a different sector sections of LGBTI organisations to come under one umbrella to organise prides in different parts of uh, our province. So we're going to be having our Pride Week uh, from the 13th to the 22nd of December this year. Um, which is many, which will be headed by the KZN Pride uh, organization, which we part of.